Jack, have one yourself. Oh, thanks. And pass them around to the boys. They look like they could use a good smoke. Well, boys, you came to my office for a story. Any questions you want answered, feel free. Doug, what's your feeling on organized crime today? I think it's great. I ought to. I organized it, didn't I? <laughs> no, I mean that. It's great. Compared to what it was when I was a punk, scrounging around the 87 precinct for a fast buck, I don't have to tell you guys. Today, crime's a big business. And 90% of big crime has been taken over by honest men. You all through, Jack? Look, I want the mirror. Not every day you give me a haircut. I might not like the job you did. First time a barber ever made me look like a monk. Hi, Warden. You bring the Padre along to help break the bad news? It is bad this time, Doug. No more stays. Figures. I've been here seven years. That's a long time to be on death row. Sooner or later, I had to turn up on the state's electric bill. Any last words, Doug? Yeah. I got a flash for the three guys who testified at my trial. The three rats who put me here. Charlie Talbert, Bob Jason, Toots Brendan. You got a good memory, honey. I want him to know when the warden pulls a switch for me, he pulls it for them, too. You can quote me. What's your pleasure? Oh, I'm just looking around, thank you. What's this gadget? That? You're gonna have a lot of fun with that. How's it work? Well, you push your fingers on each end, and then, then you pull, and, and you're stuck. <laughs> Looks like I am. <laughs> That's very funny. How much it cost? Fifty cents. All right, I'll take one. You don't have a lot of laughs with it. Wait and see. Look, mister, if this is a stick-up... That's no stick-up, Jason. That's for the gadget. And this is for Doug Quinn. Well, we can tear this one up. At least he got it far, far away from the 87. Oh, it's one down. Hey, my. What are the odds on the other two? I don't think they could take out any new insurance. Yeah. Mr. Evans, I'm sorry, but your son is going to have to stand trial. He was identified in a lineup. Four boys about his age dressed as much like him as possible, and every one of the holdup victims picked out Pete. If they could be wrong, people make mistakes. That's right. They do. Pete made a few himself. He was carrying these. Zip gun. Switchblade knife, 
brass knuckles, 15 rounds of 22 ammunition. And a lot of money for a kid who isn't working, nearly $500. Where'd you get it? Where'd you get the money? You do. You take him. Look at this. Look at this. Look at You are. Well, me... Not take him out. Got it, I remember. I was just a kid hanging around the 87th precinct. Doug Quinn, he was a big wheel. Always had the biggest cars, the flashiest dames. I'd watch him drive by and I'd say to myself, Meyer, if he can do it, you can too. Well, I know what saved you. What? You found out the big cars and flashy dames are only status symbols. You figured me out. Yeah. Catch this. I just picked up a news bulletin on the radio. Charlie Talbot was knocked off tonight in Seattle. Well, that knows it down to Toots Brendan. Boy, Quinn's friends didn't waste any time. You know, after the conviction, I wouldn't have bet that Quinn had a friend left. At first, it was Jason and Talbot. I wonder how Toots Brendan's sleeping these nights. Okay, my wallet. Tickets. My key's okay. Listen, with a little luck, I'll be back in a couple of days. Now, you take care of yourself while I'm gone. You take care of yourself. Don't worry about me. I know my way around. Well, come on. Come on. Give us a smile. Come on. It's only a couple of days. That's better. I'll phone you from town. And look, you look after your mommy. You hear? You hear? Is there something I can do? Ah, uh, well, no, thanks, ma'am. Uh, we'll try to drop back later. But he'll be out of town for a few days. Oh, well, that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll catch him some other time. Here's your paper, ma'am. Thank you. a welcome from the department. Oh, you're not getting one. We just like to meet every crook that comes to town. Let them know we're interested. Very thoughtful of you. Interested in how soon they'll be leaving. Thank you. you cops never change, do you? You can't roust me around. I'm clean as a whistle. Ross, you're around. I don't get it. All I expressed was a friendly interest in how soon you'll be leaving us. Two days, give or take. I'll wave goodbye.
think you got troubles now? Here's a rocket from Central Station. Toots Brendan just landed. Special detail officer out there interrogating. He says he's here on business. How could the guy be that dumb? If Doug Quinn had a friend left in the world, this is the place to find him. If Albert and Jason didn't even have to make the trip. Maybe we've all been doing Toots an injustice by calling him a rat. A stunt like this makes him more of a lemming. A what? You don't do crossword puzzles, lemming. That's a rodent who commits suicide, huh? Well, Mr. Morgan said he'd be along in a few minutes. If you don't mind, you can wait in his office. Um, well, I, I think this will be comfortable. <laughs> well, I I'll get you a magazine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, miss. Uh, you did say you were Toots Brandon, didn't you? That's right. Hmm. I must be slipping. Beg pardon? Well, uh, I always heard that Toots Brandon was a swinging wolf. I expected to be chased around the desk. <laughs> you still might be, honey. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm the one who's slipping. <laughs> well, thank goodness. If for a minute there, you had me worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, toots. Mr. Morgan. Uh, thank you for entertaining Mr. Brendan while he was waiting. Oh, my pleasure. No, the pleasure was all mine. <laughs> Over here, my boy. Where did you find such a living doll? Why, Toots, I thought you were a family man. No, 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 no. I just said that to keep in practice. I'm all settled down. I got the greatest wife in the world. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I got a kid, too. He's smart as a whip. Hey, I got, I got a picture of him. Hmm? Looks just like me. You came a long way to talk about your family. Okay. I'll get to the point. Good. One word. Money. Whose? Mine? What's coming to me? I mean, according to the deal that you made with Jason Talbot and me, we get 10% of the action for life, right? Look, I read the papers, Toots. Talbot and Jason are off the books. <clears throat> I'm still alive. If you're still with us at the end of the next quarter, you'll get your cut of the action as usual. Look, Toots, this is a business proposition. Yeah, well, that's what I came to make you, a business proposition. Yeah, my cut of this operation ought to be worth... Well, Quarter million dollars? Conservatively. I'm willing to sell out for 100 G's cash. That's a very satisfactory offer, Toots. Unless Quinn's men bump you off tomorrow morning. Or tonight. They haven't got me yet. You know they're going to be trying, don't you? And if they succeeded, I'd be out $100,000. Look, Toots, if you don't mind, I I'm sort of busy. I'm not finished talking, Morgan. For seven years, you've gotten fat on the take from Quinn's rackets. That word's gone out of style. I run certain business enterprises. Yeah, thanks to Jason, Talbot, and me. You're not trying to tell me I haven't shown a proper gratitude for your testimony. Gratitude begins now, as far as I'm concerned. If I don't see any, there might be some more testimony that you won't like too much. <laughs> What's so funny? Chuts. Your testimony against Doug Quinn was only important because everybody in the city wanted Doug out of business. He'd been a bad boy. You're going to have a lot of trouble finding anybody to listen to you when you start talking about me. Quinn's friends might want to know who really put him in the chair. They might at that. Why don't you tell them? <laughs> Too particular. <laughs> Would I be here if I was? It's 
Lieutenant Smith. Now, that's an odd name. You don't see many of those. You're a smash with those jokes. Now, let me have the key. Jimmy will take you to your room, Mr. Smith. Just registered under the name of John Smith, but it's Toots Brendan, all right. I thought you'd like to know. Yes, Mr. Smith. Get me Temple three nine nine seven zero. Mr. Morgan's office. Oh, honey, this is Toots. Well, hello there. You miss me? <laughs> you know I do. I'll make it up to you, sweetheart. Is the boss in? Uh, no, no, Toots, I'm sorry, he's not. Well, when he gets in, will you tell him that I've been thinking about that deal and he can have it for 50000 I'll have to know in 24 hours. I'll call back tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Bye. Hi, Toots. Name's Corella. You're a cop. Yeah, I didn't think you'd remember me. You walked the beat right in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You're the guy. How could I forget you? Uh, come on, Toots. You've been arrested before that. Never forgiven a cop money. You made it a first. I had an envelope marked for you from Doug Quinn. All I did was show it to you, and you put the arm on me. <laughs> you got a good memory. You still a cop? Mm-hmm. How's honesty paying off? They made you captain? No, I'm still in the ranks. Honesty is its own reward. Somebody said that, didn't they? Well, they were talking about virtue, Toots, but you're warm. You didn't walk in here just to get a haircut. No. No, I want to know why you're back in the 87th. Not breaking any laws I know of. Well, you've been gone a long time, Toots. What brings you back? Maybe I'm looking for an honest cop. They're hard to find. Well, that depends on who's looking. What do you want? Police protection, you read the papers. Look, I'm a citizen, I'm a taxpayer. How do you freeloaders earn your dough? We help old ladies across busy intersections. That keeps us pretty busy. It's a deck. There's somebody here. They miss me. Mister, you're bleeding like a stuck pig. Oh, no, that, that jerk Bob, when I peeled out of his chair, he cut me with his razor. I'm all right. Well, that's good news. Hey, wait a minute. In case they come back to check, I better call the meat wagon. The meat wagon? Yeah. Show them to lie down. You're dead. Sure. All I got was one quick look before I hit the deck and another flash as it turned the corner. Where'd they find it? A prowl car spotted it in the park. It had a flat tire. Served them right. And took the license plates with them, huh? Yeah, but they were probably stolen anyway. We're checking the motor number now. Well, might as well know who it was stolen from. <laughs> hey, it's all yours, Tom. <clears throat> See if you can come up with some nice, clean prints, huh? Say, uh, I hear they really made you eat some dirt, huh? Well, I hear you dug a foxhole right on the barbershop floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say, that's good for you, boy. It'll keep you loose. Yeah. Is Steve still out right here? Yeah. Hi. Right. See you, Steve. Thanks, sir. Hello. 
Uh, we got the dope sheet on the old Quinn mob. There's not too many of them left. Two of them are deported. Seven of them cashed in their chips. That's an expression that we gamblers use. Five of them are listed under address unknown. He probably left town. Oh, I see. So nobody shot at Toots. I just imagined the whole thing. Why, not so fast. There are two possibles. One of them used to do the driving. The other was a torpedo. Red Chambers. Very handy man with a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah, what's the address? Uh-huh. The wheel man's name is Harry Bushnell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I'll get right on it. Got a lead? I think so. You remember Red Chambers? Red Chambers, yeah. What you been doing lately? Shooting at me, I think. Yeah, this is it. Well, Red's come down in a world. Used to be a suite at the Ritz, man, in the old days. Yeah, everybody has their ups and downs, even crooks. Let's go. Something we don't know about? Yeah, some alibi. Auto accident. Busted my leg in three places. When? Four weeks ago. Guy my age don't heal so fast. Sit down. Gets lonesome just sitting there. What happened to all your friends? You ought to know you jugged most of them. Sit down. Now, this isn't a social visit, Red. What else could it be? Somebody took a pot shot of me yesterday. I thought it might be your light touch. <laughs> Three things wrong with that, Corella. First, with this thing on, I couldn't even handle a BB gun. Second, if it had been me, you wouldn't be standing there now. And third, why should I want to blast you? Well, just for old times' sake. I got no beef against you. Have a drink over there. No, thanks. <laughs> said. Activity. Like uh, where you were around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Right here. Why? Because somebody shot at me from a moving car about that time. That's why. I haven't driven a car in over three years. No? What's the matter? Can't you keep up the payments, Harry? That's what I'm doing. Keeping up the payments. I don't get it. Well, about five years ago, upstate, I ran over a kid. I got two years for manslaughter. And I haven't touched the wheel since I got out. Since when did it cramp your style on having a license? I got a license. Something I can do for you, gentlemen? This is Brother Jeffrey, the detective. Well, I'm sure that Harry has... Was he uh... here yesterday afternoon? Yes, indeed. In the afternoon before that, and the afternoon before that, and... Well, I couldn't run the mission without him. He's been my strong right arm for nearly three years now. Thank you very much. Um, any donation you'd care to make? Good luck. Good luck, Harry. It's nice merchandise, Mrs. Turner. Hey, why did you be a big spender? Buy it. It's on special today. Six bits. No, uh, my wife picks out my ties. Uh, Besides, you weren't brought in here so you can make a sale. I gotta live, too. 
I know, I know. And I respect you for making your own way. But there's a city ordinance that says all peddlers have to be licensed. I'm a merchant. And I can't make my living sitting here. Mrs. Turner, take out a license, please. Now, this is the last time I'm going to tell you. The next time you're picked up, you're going to pay a fine. That's all. Tom, let her go. I'd have enough money to buy a license if I didn't have to spend all my time sitting here talking to people who are too cheap to buy a necktie on special. Come on now, anyone you like. Four bits. Huh? Come on. All right, all right. Mrs. Turner, you made a sale before you marked it down. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> But get that license, you hear? Oh, sure. Uh, Mrs. Turner, don't tell me you haven't got that license yet. Tomorrow, I promise. Hey, you should wear better looking ties. What's you know? the matter with my... Mrs. Turner, you picked out this tie for me yourself. Yeah, sure. Sure, I did. <laughs> oh, see you Christmas. Yeah, wear the license. Oh, sure. <laughs> Steve, Lieutenant wants to see you. Oh, thanks. Hello, Steve. Down. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Chris Brendan. There's a report from the morgue that when the ambulance arrived with Mr. Brendan's corpse, it was playing gin rummy with the ambulance attendant. I wonder where Toots got the cards. I'm sorry, Steve. This is a serious matter. I, I know it is, Lieutenant. Look, maybe it wasn't by the book, Lieutenant, but I couldn't think of another way to get Brendan out of the precinct alive. Unless we gave him a police escort. I can't say you weren't thinking. But I'm still in trouble. The district attorney's heard about the shooting. He wants to know why we're not giving Brendan police protection all the way. But couldn't somebody tell him we might have a couple of other things to do? Maybe that's been tried, but the DA has his own special problem. I don't think he's listening. What problem? There's a star witness in a criminal conspiracy case who's getting very nervous every time he reads that something has happened to one of the Doug Quinn witnesses. I get the point. Thought you would. Well, how long do we take care of him? Until we find the men who are trying to kill him. Bring Brendan in here. Hey, Carella. Uh, you know something? That ambulance attendant is a crook. He is? Yeah, he took me for ten bucks playing gin rummy before we got to the morgue. They were my cards. I'll give him a break, Toots. How often does he get a live one? <laughs> He's all yours, Carella. There's a suite reserved for you at the Claiborne Hotel. The Claiborne? That's a second-rate hotel. You and the other men in the squad room set up a 24-hour watch. Yes, sir. Okay, Toots. Have one on me. Come on, go ahead. Gentlemen, may I present Toots Brandon? Until further orders, we're babysitting him. What? Yeah, I'm taking him over to the Claiborne Hotel. You leave me at 6 o'clock. That's the idea. I told you, Toots is our baby. You relieve Meyer at midnight. Bert, you take over at 6. I'll take the noon shift. Look, Steve. Wouldn't it be a lot easier just to throw this clown into a cell and forget him? Sure it would. Look at the money we save the taxpayers. And I happen to be a taxpayer. Well, Toots hasn't broken any laws. You're not lately. We can always suspect him, can't we? The kid's right, Steve. We could book him on a holding charge, or maybe even vagrancy. Ah, we could spend weeks contacting every police department in the country to see if they have anything on Toots. Who knows? We might even hit pay dirt. Well, you can stop dreaming. The lieutenant says take him to the Claiborne Hotel. He's going to the Claiborne Hotel. See you at 6 o'clock. Come on, Toots. You know what people are always saying? That when you need a cop, you can never find one? Well, this is the reason why. We're too busy protecting crumbs like Toots Brendan. What garbage? Well, you seem to be doing all right with it. What do you want me to do, stop? No, it would take too long. <clears throat> it really bugs you being here with me, don't it? You kidding? If I wasn't here with you, I'd be home listening to my old lady complain. What's her beef? But I'm never home to listen to her. Did I say I wanted to watch that thing?
Well, what are you trying to do? Get me to miss my old lady? She always says that. <laughs> this crummy hotel. How long do I have to stay here? How long do you want to stay alive? What am I supposed to do? Tip you handsomely for protecting me? I'm doing this out of love, toots. You ought to be glad I am. There's not enough money in the world to keep me on this job. Too bad there isn't something you can do about it. Oh, there are things I could do, toots. I could be in that other room washing my hands when they break the door down and put the blast on you. Very easy to arrange. You're a good cop. You don't play that way. Let me give you a word of advice. Just don't make it seem too attractive to me to change. this hotel at all, Steve. He's been complaining about the food, the service, the wallpaper in his bedroom, even the company he has to keep. Well, maybe we can cheer him up. This is his wife, Mrs. Porter, Detective Meyer. Right there. You, uh, you did say Porter. Yeah, that's the name Brendan's been using. Wait for me, Mrs. Porter. Could be. I hear it's a big city. What about a man who runs a clothing store? Her name's Claude Porter. Don't you cops have anything better to do? All right, that's the name I've been living under. So what? Hope you didn't spend a lot of time finding it out. No, we didn't spend any time. Mrs. Porter came to us. Said a friend of hers here in the city saw the front page of today's paper called her. Send her back to Cleveland. Get her out of here. I don't want to see her. I can't do that, Toots. She's right outside. What did you bring her here for? Look, you can't hide it from her anymore. She knows who you are. She's been your wife for six years, I understand. That entitles her to a little something, doesn't it? I need a chance to talk to you, hmm? Darling. Where did you get the crazy idea of saying that you were my wife? Well, what's so crazy about it? It brought me here. Whose idea was it? Mr. Morgan wanted to get in touch with you. This seemed the best way to do it. What's on Morgan's mind? Is he ready to deal? Would he go to all... Would he go to all this trouble to say no, Torts? He'll go for the 50,000. He'll go. What made him change his mind? Me. <clears throat> no one, Morgan, I doubt that. Oh, I can sell anything I believe in. You believe in me? Not particularly. I don't get it. What made him change his mind? Well, I told him if anybody wouldn't talk, a man with a new name, a wife and kid to go with it, would be the least inclined to. And $50,000 is dirt cheap for that kind of dummy act. So where's the 50000 Are you kidding? Do you think Morgan would trust anybody with that kind of money? Not even me. Mrs. Porter. I've got to leave in a few minutes. You better cut your visit short. Oh, well, uh, I'll be right out. You tell Morgan that I'll come around for the money as soon as I get these police monkeys off my back. It shouldn't take more than a couple of days. Oh, there's a rub. What rub? Well, Mr. Morgan told me to tell you that the offer was only good for tonight. Oh, that makes it a great offer. I can't just walk out of here. There's only one door to this suite, and the policeman's watching it. You'll find a way. Good.
goodbye, dear. And I'll see you again if Detective Corella will permit it. And don't eat too much of that starchy hotel food. Bye, darling. You were very kind to let me talk to my husband. Well, not at all, Mrs. Porter. He's not being held on a criminal charge. We, well, we don't want this to be a hardship on him or his family. I'll drop you off at your hotel. Oh, well, I, I'm staying with friends. I'll take a cab. Thank you very much. Though. No, it's no trouble. I'll be glad to drop you off. See ya. Let's take it from the top. You still say you're Mrs. Claude Porter? You heard me the seventh time. You wouldn't care to show me your social security card, would you? No. Not unless you have a legal right to see it. Well, that can be arranged. But I think we'll just call your home instead. Al, this is Corella. Make a long distance call for me. Mrs. Claude Porter, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, you wouldn't know your telephone number, would you? No, I don't know the number. Okay. Raj? The waiter, I came to the wife. Oh, it's you, Joe. I thought it was my relief. I forgot his dessert order. Yeah, just put it down. I'll tell him. Some appetite, huh? Yeah, some appetite. I'll let you out. Right. Hey, Toots. Come on, knock it off, will you? to a lot of trouble tonight to see Toots Brendan. I'm prepared to go to just as much trouble to find out why. He's my husband. <laughs> Isn't that reason enough? Oh, no, no. He's your husband until I get Cleveland on that phone. Then I'm going to book you, honey. Book me? For what? That depends on you. Who gave you the information about Claude Porter? Told you to come here, say you were his wife. 87 Squad. Haviland. Here, Ma, he's here. Hey, Steve, take it on, too. Yeah, Meyer. 
You did. Okay, I'll take care of her. No, oh, no, she's right here. Yeah. Raj, put on an APB on Fitz Brendan. He's loose? Yeah. Give me communications. Send out an all points bullet on Toots Brendan. Yeah. All right. Now you ask me what charges I can book you on, I'll tell you. The law does not distinguish between a killer and his accomplice. You went to see him right after that he escaped from protective custody. Now I don't know what message you gave him to make him do that. But if anything happens to him, I guarantee you I'll book you as an accessory to murder. Nice night. Yeah. Are you on the lamb, Mac? <laughs> Isn't everybody? Now, that's a smart answer. You know, it isn't any of my business, but I thought you'd like to know there's a car following us. You act the kind of jumpy when you got in my hack. Yes, Sam, lose him. Uh-huh, Mac. You'll lose him. from the morgue. They just brought in a body. It was identified as Toots Brendan. Bert? Yeah? Take her downstairs and book her. The charge is accessory to murder. But I didn't have anything to do with it. I was just following orders. He didn't tell me he was going to kill Toots Brendan. He didn't tell you? Who didn't tell you? I want his name. It's Trenton Morgan, my boss. Where can I find him? 1152 Medford Avenue. Okay, Rob, let's go. Bert, let's take her down to the main All right, miss. That's a funny question. I came for my money, the 50000 I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, now listen, Morgan. Don't play games with me. I ran almost all the way across town to get here. <sighs> Bun said you had the money, but it had to be tonight. All right, it's tonight. Now let's have it. Let me get this straight. Yvonne told you I was going to pay you $50,000? I said she did. Now give it to me. I don't keep that kind of money in the apartment. You ought to have that much sense. Listen, Trent, I figure I'm going to die tonight anyway. Doesn't make much difference what I do in the meantime. Just so long as I get that money in the mail to my wife. That's all I thought I'd be able to do in town anyway. If I got out alive, that'd be velvet. Now, let me have the money. Well, it's about time you got here. 
You. One of Quinn's boys who were trying to get me, it was you. You had Jason and Talbot rubbed off. Take him. Some guy that looks like me. Nothing for you to worry about. Oh, look, would I lie to you? Of course not. Okay, you kiss the kid for me, I'll be home as soon as I tie up some loose ends. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, loose ends. It's like explaining about the money Morgan's been sending you all these years. Huh? Oh, that. Yeah. Come on, Toots, let's join the party. We kept Quinn's old cell warm for you. All right, miss. You're next. Oh, but... But he lied to me. He said Brendan had been killed. Oh, I'm ashamed of you, Corell. I always thought you were an honest cop. Yeah, you know what's getting so you can't trust anybody these days? Okay, so it's about that money. <laughs> it's a long story. It's all right. We go all night. <laughs> 